Hey everybody, this is the Jake Popper and welcome back. And today I'm going to share with you my top 5 gravel routes in Port Alberni. These are routes that begin in Port Alberni and may or may not end in Port Alberni. It's just starting within the town. So starting off with number 5, I have the Log Train Trail. Now Log Train Trail is a nice, easy, flat, 50 kilometer or so loop from the center of town and it doesn't have too great of better gradients. I prefer to take this route going up Beaver Creek Road and down from the top north side down to the south side to Coombs Candy and as I, as I think that that way is a little bit more gradually downhill as like the elevation chart at the north end is a bit higher than the lower end at the south side and yeah it takes about an hour and 30 minutes for the average person. Uh, my personal best is I think 50 eight minutes but I'll correct me I'll correct that the pros of this route would be it's flat relatively it's easy it's quick it's mostly shaded which is nice in the summertime although in the winter it is gets pretty muddy some people might not like it due to it can be bumpy at times specifically in the half lower half section of the trail and the upper half is relatively smooth but it just depends on the bike you're riding if you're riding like a hardtail it'd be smoother ride wider tires and all that overall i rate the log train trail about a seven out of ten i recommend it if you're new to mountain biking or gravel biking as it's a pretty beginner entry level one but i find i still enjoy riding it quite often actually all right, coming in at number four, we got, I'd say, Port Alberni to Cumberland. Now, this is a route I did in July, about 80 kilometers, and it starts on the north side of Port Alberni, top of Beaver Creek Road, and it heads up uh, Comox, Maine. Heads up around Comox, Comox Lake, around there, into uh, Cumberland. It can be pretty steep at times, I'd say. Uh, the views are pretty good going around Comox Lake, but there's lots of really steep up and down portions that uh, can wear you down. Also a great place to eat in um, Cumberland would be a Ryder's Pizza. On my trip there I rode there and I um, had lunch there. Overall I'd say this uh, route would be a pretty intermediate course. Definitely not for new gravel riders. It has lots of um, areas with no cell service and it's, it's a quite scenic route I'd say. It has its ups and downs but it's overall it's pretty good. I'd say it's about eight and a half out of 10. Okay, coming at number three, we got Golden Eagle Basin. Now this is a out and back route in Port Alberni. It uh, goes out to the very end of China Creek, Maine, 600 meters of elevation above sea level. And yeah, just go up this old logging road, the last section, then you come out into this very nice basin surrounded by mountains. The climb is pretty mellow. Road is relatively smooth as well, so it's, it's an enjoyable climb. Takes about two hours for the average rider. I discovered this one recently with a group of riding buddies. Very, very beautiful spot. We saw about 20 elk actually when we when we went there that time, all marching in a row down the trail. Quite the sight to see. It's about a 40 kilometer out and back route, so it's pretty short, relatively speaking, in terms of the other routes on this list. Difficulty rating, I'd say it's more on the beginner side. Pretty mellow. There's also a couple of old uh, mine shafts up in the um, Golden Eagle Basin. I haven't been there, but it's just what I've heard, so who knows. And yeah, overall, I'd say this is a 8 out of 10 route. All right, coming at number two, we got the Sprout Lake Loop. Now, Sprout Lake Loop, it heads around the south side of the lake, or the north side, depends. But uh, in my preference, I prefer the south side, as it starts up, start, you start at gravel from the beginning. It's about a 80 kilometer or so loop, 80, 90, depending on where you, you start in town. And about quarter way in, a lot because a couple punchy climbs it kind of peaks and plateaus and then start heading gradually per se downhill down to the far west side of the lake pretty smooth there is some rough spots it's always a nice view obviously because it's you're, you're going around the lake the entire time cell service can be spotty especially on the south side of the lake south west kind of side of the lake and heading back on the road the highway is nice and has a nice wide shoulder so you feel relatively safe lot tons of great spots to swim along the way lots of little beaches and trails that head down into down to the lake i'd say this route can be a beginner to intermediate it's a it can be tough at times there are maybe five in total five climbs you really kind of gotta push in this route but it is pretty mellow for a 80 kilometer semi gravel loop i guess you would say it still has tons of gravel about 40 50 kilometers worth yeah, as an overall score, I'd probably say it would be probably a 9. 
it's, it's a very very scenic route. And coming in at number one, we got the Cook Creek Horn Lake Loop. I'd say the first time I tried it, I was told all my riding buddies about it. I had such an amazing time on it. So what I did was I kind of go up, start at Coombs Candy, right into the highway into coming into Port Alberni. Head up to Lookout, or maybe the power lines, depending on who you ask. I went up to Lookout because I prefer that way. Heading up, starting my gravel rides. Head up through past Lacey Lake, down the Lacey Lake Road that goes to Horn Lake and the Horn Lake Caves kind of road. And then up Cook Creek, Maine, around there, following Cook Creek, Maine into the other side of Vancouver Island, Oceanside. And then following that down to uh, Cochrane Road, which is the road over there. It's and up the fish hatchery trail near Horn Lake there. This runs from the highway up to, and then following the south side of the lake down around behind the power lines back into Port Alberni. Now, if you're starting this route from in town, it'd be about 100, 90, 90, 100 kilometers. Now this ride does have some hills. It does have some descents and long, prolonged, grueling climbs per se, because you're it's 100 kilometers and you get tired. The views throughout the ride are, as you peak in Cook Creek, as you look over the Strait of Georgia, it's a quite a nice view as you're flying down the trail, down into the uh, lower Qualicum Bay area-ish. I'd say this route would definitely be a upper intermediate kind of route. There's lots of elevation gain, but it's kind of gradual elevation gain. It's not up and down, up and down, up and down. It's Got a big hill, okay, you go down, then you kind of mellow out, then you climb a little hill, and then you kind of, it, it's very mixed. And uh, Horn Lake is one of my favorite lakes. And with that being said, the uh, Cook Creek Horn Lake Loop would be my number one gravel route in Port Alberni. As of time of recording, there can always be more later down the road. And I guess we should end the video with some honorable mentions, starting with the uh, Lacey Lake Loop. Pretty good, pretty good um, beginner gravel ride, you just head up the um, Alberni Lookout Road, starting from Coombs Country Candy there. And you head up to the nearest lake up in that area, which is Lacey Lake, up at the top of the power lines in uh, Port Alberni there. Head down, there's a logging road that snakes down through there, and it turns to into the um, historic Horn Lake Trail, which is an old wagon road from hundreds of years ago. And yeah, and just take the log train trail back to Coombs Country Candy, and it's a probably a good 20, 25 kilometer loop. It's a good, nice short loop. Final honorable mention would be Mount Irwin. Now, this is a route for people who like climbing, like good views, and like gravel descents. Now, this mountain is about 1,315 meters, but the uh, highest logging road up there goes up to about 1,230 or so meters. And there are some like subalpine trails and quad trails at the top of that mountain that can be biked down. I've uh, did that a couple times. Thinking of, um, bikepacking up there but I didn't really get around to it and uh, the people I asked to come with me did not like the idea of riding five hours up a mountain with bikepacking gear. I don't blame them. So yeah, Mount Irwin. It's a long ride, hard ride, steep, hot in the summer, and in the winter you can't bike up it because there's snow. But if you do decide to ride up it, you get some great views and you get some pretty fun downhill. It's about a four hours up and uh, 45 minutes down to give you for that putting that in perspective i guess that would wrap up my uh, top five uh, gravel routes thank you for watching everyone and i'll see you in the next one